Well, what's going on, everybody? It's Patrick Mid 10 Outdoors. Come back. Got a little story to tell you and something pretty cool to show you. Well, what's going on, everybody? It's Patrick Mid 10 Outdoors. How's my outdoor crew doing? Well, the last few videos have been nothing but photography, YouTube. Uh, making and that kind of stuff and the things I used to do that so uh, you saw a video a while back of this particular camera here this was my mother's old uh, 35 millimeter now I expressed um, wanting to get back into 35 millimeter film shooting at some point which I just want to do s some things with it um, I think it's kind of neat that you can, st I mean, it's, it's getting harder to get the film, but it's making a resurgence. And I feel like if it's making a resurgence, then it'll probably be easier to get the film eventually. With all that said, so I was left with the camera that is not working, which was my mom's old camera. And I thought, well, I'm going to search out there, Facebook Marketplace, and see if I can find a camera worthy enough to go take some good stills on um, 35 millimeter. So I searched and searched and I found one. So let me tell you a little bit of a backstory about these cameras first before I show you what I got. Now I purchased these through a an estate. Uh, a fellow had passed away several years ago actually <clears throat> and they were the, the his widow is actually cleaning out finally cleaning out a bunch of stuff uh the fella died in 2016 so i mean she's you know some people take longer to relinquish uh things from loved ones and some things some people just you know it's get out of my hair and out of my face whatever and we i understand that so anyway let me read you a little bit about the fella that owned these particular camera cameras I'll get to that shortly too. So his name was Wallace Walter Wally, his nickname, Durek Jr., age 54, of Mount Juliet, Tennessee, died September 19th, 2016. Yes, I'm reading the actual obit because the actual obit is where all the cool information about was. His widow did confirm to me all of this is 100% accurate. Wally was a graduate from the University of Tennessee Martin Nashville School and Nashville School of Law. He retired as, and this is where it starts getting really cool, as a special, special agent with the IRS Criminal Investigation Division. Highlights of his field investigation work include security detail for Russian Prime Minister Mikhail Gorbachev, President George H.W. Bush, First Lady Hillary Clinton. He also worked closely with the FBI and DEA to handle white collar crimes and security detail. Wally was most proud of his recognition and service award by Kenneth Starr for his service to the Whitewater investigation. Okay. So, uh, he keeps on going about his other accomplishments. You know, he's a lawyer. Uh, he worked, uh, he was a, assigned to the e-discovery program for the IRS CI. He handled e-crimes, computer forensics, and congressional and Department of Justice requests, reviewing legal issues and protecting clients' rights. Uh, he won a big award in 2009 from the IRS. Um for his work and then um other i mean he worked with multiple agencies especially with the fbi federal law enforcement and training center and i mean just it just keeps on going what all this guy really did um but uh i thought it was really cool when when i first saw it i was kind of like okay this has got to be some kind of blowing up the skirt thing but then i find out no, it's not. This is true. Um, he actually had a um, hidden office 
away from where he lived. And that's where he did a lot of his work, in which is actually probably about a 45 minute or so drive from here. Um, I did find out all this stuff. I mean, it, it, of course, it has nothing to bear now because it's so far away. But uh, the time period and everything, of course, the guy's passed. But um, I thought it was so cool, the story. Now, let's top this off with what I'm fixing to show you. Okay, guys, we're back. So, these are his two cameras he used for his work. Anytime he did any kind of uh, photography stuff for the job, these are the ones he used. He also did private PI work when he was um, in between doing things for the government. So these were the two cameras he used. They're Minolta Maxim QT-SI. They're a 35 millimeter, but what's cool is these things are auto-focusing. These, this is a, and now what I find, find that's really cool is he had two of them. He didn't have just one, he had two of them and he kept, and this is the way I found them, was both lenses on both cameras just like this. So now this one is a 70 to 210 millimeter lens. So this one's for reaching out and seeing what the heck they're doing from afar away. This one is a 35 to 80 millimeter lens. So this is an up close and personal type deal. Or if you're wanting to try to get shots um, of a crowd or whatever. Uh, if you got somebody in a crowd you may be surveilling. You know, this is a perfect camera for that. Now, these are excellent shape. I mean, they are in excellent shape. They both power up. They have no film in them right now. I'm actually waiting on film for these things. Uh, the one of the things I did do, because I had one, is I found a UV protector for this lens. Uh, it's a 49 millimeter thread. So I had an extra one. So I put it on this one. I've actually got one coming for this because they're both 49 millimeter. But they both power up. If you can see that right there. They both power up. I can even... Flashes work, clicks, everything. I mean, these things are in excellent excellent condition. Now, these were probably top-of-the-line SLRs back in the day. So, I kind of look forward to, and you can change it. Now, oh, that's the other thing. These have automatic focusing. Even on the zoom, it has automatic focusing. Or you can switch to manual focusing on both cameras. I just find it really, I mean, they're there was a model that was just above these cameras uh, that gave you a little more uh, programming options and that kind of thing. But he got these two, and that way he had both these cameras. He knew them, and he could pick it up, turn it on, and he could do what he needed to do. You know, one of the things I find annoying with them, both of them, and I would imagine it was probably kind of a pain for him too, is the flash comes on automatically. So he has to turn that flash off every time he was doing something. Um, the other thing is, is these things don't use rechargeable batteries. I mean, I guess you could get rechargeable style batteries. But they use, and <laughs> I didn't know these existed, but these use a CR2 battery. It uses two of them. There's the lithium, lithium CR2 battery. Now I looked to see, and if you ever run across this, the CR123s will not go in their places because these are two short little batteries. So they're they're definitely different than a CR123. <clears throat> but there they are. Um, now, oh, let me show you this real quick. I even have the bag he used for many years. And you can tell... If you look at the bag, how old this bag is and how worn it is from being used. Um, the other thing is, he must have been a smoker. Because, man, it smells. <laughs> they smell. But um, what was crazy is I found stuff in here. Here's the manual on that particular lens. Here's where he bought one of the cameras. I'd have to look and see. I'm sure it's got the... Um, let me see. I bet they've got the serial number on them somewhere. Maybe not. 
may have been somewhere but in 02 he paid 249 dollars for one of these bodies just for one of the bodies that was it just the camera body not the lens not anything else uh it was ups ground cci camera city is where he got them out of brooklyn new york which is just really crazy that he got that's where he got these things from uh there's another book on the lens minolta's lenses back then and at some point it probably had a flash with it um we all know how these you know these uh flashes that come with the cameras are not always that great um mom's didn't even have a flash on it the only downside oh and here's here one of the one of them did have a camera strap on it and the crazy thing is he kept the original camera straps i just that blew me away these are the original factory and let's see if i can get this in there that's the original factory minolta strap so he had it just blows me away that all this stuff was available in the camera bag um somebody had probably gone through it to uh clean out any other personal effects that were in there there's another oh i know what that is that's a i think that is a hand strap if you wanted to hold it like that i think i think that is i know the old um well this old strap was actually still clipped on one of them so they used that kind of a fastener so i bet that's what that is is a hand arm strap so it's not so much on you um but I can see him sitting somewhere doing surveillance on something and having both cameras ready to go. If he need to take a picture of a tag as the car went by, he had his one lens. Uh, if he was shooting way far off and then he had the other lens. But this bag is outside of the it looking rough is in really good shape. I mean, I was really blown away by what kind of shape the bag was in. I mean, you can see the cracking and stuff and the wear from it so i won't be using the bag i'm probably going to save it and put it away for now but the cameras i'm going to be using i've got some film coming i've got another uh uv lens coming for this what i thought about doing was taking pictures and at some point offering them as cards on either my website or somewhere or may even set up something different um to sell and so these are going to be going on trips with me when i start going on trips again and when i uh shoot a dslr picture i may shoot a 35 millimeter to have developed and just get back into the 35 millimeter thing but just the history behind these cameras and what they have probably seen and done is just cool all right guys that's it for this one i uh, appreciate you watching the story behind these cameras is just so cool uh, to know what really happened. I mean, what this guy really probably saw or done. Uh, just it, It's just so neat um, to know what, what these cameras have probably seen and done over the years. So anyways, that's it for this one, guys. I, it's probably a little longer than it needs to be, but uh, I just thought it was so cool and I thought y'all would like it, especially history stuff. But that's it for this one, guys. I appreciate you watching. Be prepared. See you on the next one.